So today, uh, once again, I go back to uh, the post-independence Sri Lankan nation, which I think in the literature is uh, largely understood to be, and the literature tends to be a projection of this most of the time, uh, as it being volatile, lacking in stability. Uh, while, of course, uh, uh, laying emphasis on different uh, defining moments of that uh, post-independence uh, three generations uh, through incidents like uh, violent uh, political uprising, economic and social uh, implosion, uh, migration, um, and also as we have discussed, uh, there's a branch of literature itself emerging from the migrant uh, or expatriate quarter. So Sri Lankan English writing has uh, in that way kind of mapped out some of these tensions and anxieties, uh, era defining um, energies of the uh, independent Sri Lankan nation. But for purposes of this interaction, I think I am once again um, making things uh, quite uh, constrict, putting them into several convenient uh, compartments for discussion. And I'll be looking at uh, some writers uh, who have drawn on what I, for convenience, call post-independence, waywardness of a nation, uh, the kind of approaches and uh, the, the points of entry through which they uh, get into those discussions and the kind of uh, portrayals or representations these writers have made. This is not a, a complete list and it is uh, consciously done so. Uh, some of these writers have been chosen so as to facilitate a discussion, uh, placing uh, uh, two or three people um, adjacent to one another at all times as, as we discuss these things. Uh, so I hope to kind of uh, spend a few minutes along this theme uh, by breaking down the overall discussion into uh, four parts. First of all, looking at uh, overall critiques of the Sri Lankan nation, the politics, the society and the economy taken together. Uh, then also maybe spending a few minutes on writers who kind of focus exclusively on things like politicization, uh, kind of uh, uh, political class getting hold of um, the hierarchies and the spaces that govern society, um, bending into their whims and needs, things like uh, class tensions that emerge uh, as a newly educated uh, uh, singular, singular speaking uh, uh, singular speaking generation comes through university in the 1950s, 60s and uh, so on. And then the resultant uh, social upheavals, especially in the southern uh, part, the singular speaking uh, areas of the country, uh, like the uh, sudden rise of the JVP in 1971, and of course the the portrayal of the JVP, or the, I would I would call it the youth uh, movement at this point, uh, because I'm not uh, really uh, referring to 1987-90, uh, more 1971. So the kind of uh, response some of these writers uh, table the youth energy, the sudden rise, um, and also how uh, some writers actually kind of place, um, how, how they juxtapose the post-independence uh, nation with uh, colonial Ceylon, some of them even implicitly suggesting that, you know, um, uh, as the song goes, to turn back the hands of time might not be uh, too bad an idea, a kind of a colonial hangover um, on the other other side of uh, these crises. 
So in uh, setting out the scene, I would like to start off with uh, uh, three writers I would like to kind of use uh, to set the framework to this overall discussion uh, for three specific reasons. Uh, the three writers being uh, Manuka Vijaysingha, who has been writing between 2006 and the present. Uh, Manuka has been writing since 2006 uh, fiction, where she has uh, published poetry. She's also in theater, so her career spans beyond that. But I think at least uh, our generation, we know Manuka through a trilogy of books, um, Monsoons and Potholes, uh, 2006, Theravada Man, 2009, then Singhal Only, 2014. So in a way, uh, Manuka Vijay Singh brings into Sri Lankan writing uh, a kind of a um, intergenerational or from generation to generation uh, commentary, critique, evaluation, assessment of uh, the Sri Lankan uh, nation in formation from independence to the present. So monsoons and potholes actually covers the whole ground uh, from the um, nationalist 50s uh, to the uh, post open economy 70s and then to the uh, the, the story moves uh, to the 1990s and uh, at one uh, level uh, monsoons and potholes the timeline kind of uh, overlaps with the theravada man that comes second but theravada man actually kind of takes us back in time right in 20s 30s leading up to independence and then uh, Singhala only. Um, in a way, uh, I would say that Manuka Vijay Singha's uh, characterization of that uh, nation in emergence uh, can be placed uh, adjacent to a writer like uh, Gunada Samarasekara in Singhala. Uh, Gunada Samarasekara is the, I think the, that's the name that comes to me when I think of Manuka Vijay Singh. Uh, because uh, what Ma Manuka does is almost like uh, the um, a, a diametrical uh, opposition, a project that is diametrically opposed to the kind of assessment uh, Gunada Samarasekara engages in from his... Uh, single nationalist uh, platform, the kind of Jatika Chintana platform uh, he has fostered. Uh, Amaru Sekar has this, uh, uh, it's a nine part, uh, eight or nine part, I think it's a nine part series, uh, starting from uh, the emergence of that post-independence moment and uh, moving forward. Uh, for for Amaru Sekar, this is a governor or a journey with the various breakdown points and re-entry points that is ongoing. So Vijay Singh actually kind of un, 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 unders, he kind of deconstructs or pulls it down, that kind of linear understanding of, uh, you know, a nation moving forward. Uh, the fact that Manuka can be placed uh, in that oppositional axis to um, Gunada Samarasekara can, I think, best be illustrated, at least in my experience, uh, where this um, fairly uh, nationalist minded writer, uh, nationalist minded uh, uh, Sri Lankan poet in English, uh, actually calls Manuka Vijay Singh a, a mad woman. Uh, in one conversation I had with him or her, this poet. Uh, referred to Manuka as that mad woman. So that kind of proves the point that Manuka um, gets into the discussion from a, a position that is not very toothsome to the the single nationalist uh, um, camp. Uh, the second right I want to kind of use in this uh, frame is someone I referred to in earlier interaction. Uh, Somachandra Vijay Suri, author of uh, First Rising, published in 2001, because 
in a way the larger project vijay singh manuka engages in vijay surya kind of takes as his terrain a definite part of that uh, larger scheme which is 1956 to 1971 um he kind of looks at the the immediate uh, the the you might call the sons and the daughters of that 1956 uh, singhala only singhala cultural uh, social political resurgence uh, how they uh, kind of operate in that uh, 15 year hiatus that leads us to uh, the 71 uh, sudden rise the, the insurgency um a third right i want to bring into this juncture is uh, again a person i've spoken about before uh, james gunawardhana uh, because gunawardhana is also quite um, critical he's skeptical of the direction in which society is going especially 1970s uh, to the to the end of the 1980s uh, if you look at uh, gunawardana's last publication one mad bit for freedom published in 1990 uh, but for me more memorably in his uh, long short story the awakening of dr kirti published in 1976 we see a system that is kind of uh, caving in on itself uh, various reasons um, the politicization cronyism um, the kind of breakdown of the old order which uh, doesn't seem to support uh, the kind of aspirations uh, uh, ceylon or sri lanka uh, came with as a young uh, independent nation in the 19 late 40s early 50s so taking this as a um kind of overall frame i would like to uh, kind of look at how some writers uh, deal with various uh, specific uh, niches uh, within uh, this uh, defined area uh, writers like uh, for example um, edrivira sarachandra who according to uh, dcra gunatilaka and uh, i think to a certain degree gamini fonseca endorses this idea uh, but gunatilaka claims that uh, sarachandra is uh, the the best novelist uh, the english language uh, writing circuit has produced in sri lanka but then uh, these ideas were i think expressed uh, about 30 years ago dated ideas but at least that's gunatilaka's idea 30 years ago sarachandra um sarat chandra's uh, curfew and the full moon i think uh, which uh, in, in a way is uh, very interestingly located in a crucial uh, juncture that is where the university uh, it's it's set in peradeniya and uh, peradeniya university and uh, the the novel kind of brings uh, into conference the university and the 1971 uprise so i think uh, in the process of building the novel sarachand is uh, sensitive to some of the social and political factors which can throw light on that overall frame which i just mapped through writers like uh, manuka vijay singh vijay surya gunavardhana uh, and so on uh, so if you take that framework as a shell someone like uh, sarachand kind of nuances it Uh, bringing in insights uh, because the feeling is that curfew and the full moon is also largely uh, based on his uh, own experiences uh, being with students uh, being among students and um, empathizing to a certain degree uh, with the economic and social challenges with which uh, the students come there and of course uh, a second writer i would like to uh, position as a as an overall critique uh, a perceptive writer i'm not very sure how fashionable uh, this book is now um, in in reading circles and so on uh, but m uh, m uh, chandrasoma uh, the author of uh, out out uh, brief candle published in 1981 so chandrasoma again maps the 
immediate post-independent uh, post-independence development through two generations and uh, there is I don't know whether this is implied but at least this is what I felt when I read it there's a kind of a second juxtaposition where the post-colonial the post-independence is uh, offset by the pre-independence the colonial times so the the order uh, Chandra Soma feeds into the text pre-independence versus the the kind of um, uh, rupturing or the, um, the the breakdown of society at different levels post-independence so these are uh, uh, two writers I want to uh, bring into conference with that framework I initially drew using Manuka Vijay Singha, Vijay Surya and uh, Gunavardhana. Now there are writers who quite specifically take to task uh, politicization, things like uh, emerging class tensions, uh, trade unionism and so on. And one place where I felt this very strongly, at least early on in the canon is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Dr. Kirti, the awakening of Dr. Kirti. Um, a 40 odd paged short story by uh, James Gunavardhana published in 1976 in his collection The Awakening of Dr. Kirti and Other Stories. This is the title story. Uh, so the story kind of evolves around a doctor working in a government hospital uh, and uh, the kind of uh, corruption and breakdown including uh, lack of respect for authority, lack of respect for order, sincerity, commitment to uh, one's assigned responsibilities, as he experiences them in the in the in the hospital. And then at another level, there is uh, uh, Dr. Kirti's son growing up, uh, who seems to be increasingly disillusioned with the prospects uh, facing him. And the story ends with uh, Kirti actually leaving the country, migrating. Uh, he can't uh, take up that implosion anymore. And this actually kind of uh, reflects on this big issue of uh, professional uh, brain drain or professional level migration that happens uh, 70s onwards. It's still an ongoing uh, issue in Sri Lanka. Uh, so Dr. Kirti is like one of those uh, early people to leave Sri Lanka jump ship uh, considering it like a sinking colossus uh, but we have uh, writers like uh, uh, Salat Chandra then a second writer that comes to mind um, who is very sensitive to the, the interplay between um, uh, class and caste is Chitra Fernando um, who published, who is I think more famous as a short story writer, but she also published, um, and this was posthumously published, uh, uh, she died quite early, a uh, novel called Cousins, uh, published in 1998. Uh, uh, then of course, uh, writers like uh, Jean Arsenagam, I would say, uh, in her prose as well, so these are writers who kind of take the politicization to task uh, as it feeds into class tensions, ethnic tensions, uh, and so on. Which brings me to another little uh, section I want to talk about, uh, which is uh, how uh, this is I'm 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 taking this on from that uh, that uh, a few comments I made on class. How um, youth unrest um, or the JVP let's say is portrayed in some of these works because uh, the JVP is this big uh, elephant you can't uh, kind of uh, walk past in discussing uh, the political landscape of the 1960s and early 70s uh, you meet the JVP or youth rebellion in different forms now there are writers who actually empathize with what happened in 71. Um, Vijay Surya is one. Uh, Vijay Surya's uh, novel First Rising is very, very, I think, politically sensitive, politically informed. 
uh, he is looking at 1971 as a some result of what was happening or not happening rather between 56 and uh, that that 15 year gap including a rampant unemployment hopes shattered hopes given shattered um, high hopes given but no execution uh, so Vijayasuri is one uh, but there are several other writers uh, who kind of uh, look at the youth scenario even in the 1980s uh, after 71 uh, the, the kind of uh, uh, period where the JVP was underground 83 to 1987 88 um, Parvati Arsanayakam has a very uh, powerful story in her collection uh, the Sikada uh, the Sikada cry and other stories uh, set in university set in Peradeniya once again uh, student politics and the kind of tensions uh, that are there and uh, she the the narrator Parvati's narrator is not a part of that setup uh, she is in certain ways more privileged she can have a choice of standing outside politics but uh, even from that uh, entitled position she kind of tries to read uh, the politics with empathy Manuka Vijay Singh, when I first read uh, Monsoons and Potholes uh, in 2006 or 7, um, there's this section where Manuka refers to the JVP, uh, 1971 JVP, as a red fungus, a uh, kind of a red fungus that spreads across society. Um, quite dehumanizing, I thought, at that point. Uh, but I was also a very young reader at that time, in my early 20s. Uh, didn't leave a good impact, uh, no, not, a, not a good impression at all. But, uh, but then later, after having read Manuka's uh, corpus, the three novels together, Monsoons and Potholes, Theravadam and Singhala only, I think uh, that kind of assessment as a, as a red fungus, uh, I think I read it more comparatively now, a kind of zoomed myself out from the immediacy of the text and I see it, uh, see it as a part of a, a bigger attitude uh, Manuka tries to uh, apply to her reading of history. Then of course Michael on Dutch, very, very, uh, this is a very popular instance where in his uh, running in the family uh, there's this incident where suddenly JVP insurgents uh, in search of weapons come to this uh, what the kind of place a Gasnar estate right in uh, Kegol uh, near Kegol in search of uh, weapons and uh, there are some uh, the, the, the the kids uh, playing uh, cricket there and we, we find this a very amusing reference uh, where some of the insurgents they leave aside their revolution for a moment and join in a game of cricket um, Ondaj, I think uh, that that little uh, uh, section, passage of play is uh, quite, uh, I would say, uh, representative of how Ondaj looks at that uh, rebellion uh, with a certain degree of amusement and not to mention uh, a lot of distance between where he is and this kind of uh, political upheaval was happening where uh, 12,000, uh, the numbers are, I think, not... Uh, finalized, conclusive, but somewhere between eight to twelve thousand people are said to have died. And uh, Kegol district, where Gasnav Estate is, uh, Kegol was like a kind of a hotbed for violence, and a lot of um, killings took place. Uh, so the whole idea of this interaction was uh, to provide a very loose outline. Or a roadmap how the critiquing of the post independence Sri Lankan nation its waywardness has uh, caught the attention of uh, Sri Lankan writers writers with a strong sense uh, of the politics the society the economy uh, of this post uh, independence nation people who try to delve into uh, various uh, tensions 
and uh, groups uh, engaged with each other within this uh, tense atmosphere. Um, so in doing so, I've looked at writers like Manuka Vijay Singha, uh, James Gunavardhana, Vijay Surya, Somachandra Vijay Surya, uh, Edrivira Sarachandra, um, Parvati Arsanayagam and M. Chandra Soma and place them in different uh, positions in this map, uh, letting their writing kind of interact, uh, making the ground uh, more nuanced and also more complicated. 